and welcome back to The Learning Circuit, where we learn about basic electronics. I'm Karen, and today we're going to learn about switches. We use switches every day to control our electronics and electrical devices. Switches allow us, the user, to submit input as to how those devices function, often to turn them on and off. If we look back to when we talked about open and closed circuits, we'll remember that electricity needs a closed loop in order to flow. When the loop is broken or opened, electricity stops flowing. That's one place where switches come in. While switches are often used to turn devices on and off, they can also be used to send signals. There are many uses for switches, and therefore, there's a wide variety of switches with different properties. Let's talk about some of those. A switch can be momentary or maintained. A maintained switch will maintain its state until it's actuated into a new one. If it is switched to on, it will stay there until it is switched to off and vice versa. A momentary switch is one that makes or breaks a connection when actuated, but once the user lets go, it returns to its default state. This is commonly found in video games like these buttons or the keyboard that you use with your computer. These buttons can be push buttons like these, they can be toggle switches, um, or often they're joysticks like you would use on a gaming controller. Historically, one of the first most commonly used momentary buttons was the telegraph. Here I've opened a momentary switch. You can see on the casing that one connection is normally closed and one is normally open. When I'm not actuating the switch, it's normally closed on the top terminal. You can see that it always is connected, but when I push on the button, it connects with the lower terminal, the one that's normally open, that becomes closed when it's pushed and back and forth. Not all push buttons are momentary. For example, this switch is a latching switch and it stays in place when it's pushed and has to be pushed again to be released. Since there are so many different uses for switches, there's a wide variety of designs for how you can interact with your switch. As we mentioned before, there are push button switches. There are slide switches, which are also used in dip switches. Dip switches used to be used in old electronics. Now they can commonly be found in automatic garage door openers. They can be used to control multiple circuits at once. There are rocking or rocker switches, toggle or knife switches, rotary switches, they can be activated by rotary or key turning, like in your car ignition. Snap action, which is simply a button that's being pressed by a lever. Some switches react to environmental stimuli. Photodiodes and photoresistors react to light. Thermistors react to heat or temperature. Proximity sensors react to movement or distance. This toy has a vibration sensor in it, which is a coil that, when vibrated, contacts the metal cylinder surrounding it, turning the switch on. There are pressure sensors, like this. There are switches that react to magnetism, like reed switches or relays. And there are also sensors that react to sound. These types are often referred to as sensors, but they can still be used as switches. There are other switches that don't use physical movement to actuate. These switches are contacts printed directly onto a PCB, like with this video game controller. These switches often have covers that connect the contacts when pressed. Lots of buttons and switches have a cover to make the interface easier and more comfortable to use. The base switch or button can be much smaller or simpler, like the membrane switches that are the contacts printed directly on the PCB. Covers can also help add leverage. While membrane switches are printed directly onto the PCB, there are three other ways to connect your switches to your circuit. Surface mount switches have small metal pads or pins that are soldered onto the surface of your PCB. They're frequently very small and compact. The next type are through hole. They have pins or leads that will fit through holes in your PCB. They also will sometimes fit in breadboards. The third type are panel mount. These type are designed to be outside the enclosure or case. This type gives more physical reinforcement. They're good for durability and stability. They're often attached to the case and not soldered directly to the PCB. Panel mount switches frequently have a washer and nut so they can be attached directly to the enclosure. If you look at a bunch of switches, you might notice that they have different amounts of pins or leads. Some have two, some have three, some have more. Like many electrical components, switches have a rating for how much voltage and current they can withstand before failing. So when shopping for switches, there are a lot of things to consider. How many connections does it need to make? What sort of actuation do you want? How do you want to mount it to your circuit? And how will it be accessed for the switch to be triggered? How much voltage will your circuit use? If your switch is being used to send and receive signals, 
it may not use the full voltage of your circuit. For example, your circuit may require 12 volts to run, but your switch may only control 5 volts. There are a lot of different switches out there, and I didn't cover all of them today. What other types of switches have you used in projects? Do you have a question about a switch that I mentioned today? Tell us about it on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning!